Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this gritty sort of vintage filter for your images. You'll often see me using this for my like to present my type, so for an example like this. And I'm just going to show you how to create this effect and it really is pretty straightforward. Um, so we'll start off by creating a new document. I'm going to make this 1080, so 1920 by 1080, oops, 1080 and 300 dpi. Make sure your colour mode's on RGB colour. Wait for that to load. Right, and the first thing you want to do is find an image that you want to do it with. And I've gone to Google Images, changed the filter here to labelled for reuse, changed the size to large, and just scrolled down for a bit and then eventually came across this one. So the picture itself is fairly simple, it's not been messed with, the colours haven't been changed, so I thought I'd use this one. So what you do is paste it in. And what I like to do is expand it quite a bit so it's well above because this sort of blurs it anyway, which is what you're kind of looking for as well. So I like to stretch it out quite big. Just put it up to there. That's about fine. And once you've got this, you're going to get your select tool and just click anywhere on the screen, drag it all the way across so everything's selected. And then use Control J or Command J if you're on Mac, which will use will just give you this crop. So now if you turn off the background layer, you've literally just got that as the layer there like that. So um, you're going to be duplicating your layers quite a lot in this after each step just so you can always go back and change things if you didn't like how it turned out. So um, I'm going to do Control J or Command J again which duplicates the layer. So then you're going to work on this new layer and the first thing you're going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, then go down to Color Lookup and the first one we're going to apply to it is going to be where is it? Foggy Night. And you see it gives it this sort of dull colour. So you're going to get that one. And then again, duplicate the layer with Control or Command J. You go, back, go back up to Image, Adjustments, Colour Lookup. And now we're going to go on Drop Blues. So that you can see it takes the colour out of it. Well, almost all the colours, mostly the blue. And duplicate that again. To image adjustments, color look up again, and you're gonna come down to futuristic bleak. You see, it gives it this sort of turquoise kind of tinge, but it's not too obvious. So, yeah, duplicate that again, and same again, adjustments, color look up. And now, I usually go through these Fuji ones here, I usually go through these and see which ones I think looks best. It's usually the ones where it like this one gives it sort of like a misty sort of look. You don't want to go for these ones where it really like contrasts the picture. You want to go for the one where it gives it sort of like a misty front. So we'll go for this one. Then from there we're going to duplicate that again. And this part's optional. You don't have to do this but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to create a new layer and using my brush fairly large and as you can see I've got the hardness at zero. And I'm just going to pick two colours. I've already got purple from when I did this earlier. So I'm just going to, you can do this whichever way you want. You don't have to do it diagonal, you can do it horizontal or whatever. But I'm just going to pick two colours that I think will work well. So let's go with purple and blue. And just fill the other side. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Because you're going to be blurring this anyway. Oops, make sure it's all covered. And then what you want to do with this layer selected, come to filter at the top. Go down to blur, Gaussian blur, and then yeah, roughly around 325. That that tends to work alright for me. I'm gonna bring it down a tad actually. Bring it up down to 300. Oops, 300. Right, and then once you've got that, you wanna to go to your blending modes over here, and you wanna put it on overlay. As you can see, it's like a really bright overlay, which is not what I want for this. So I'm just gonna bring the opacity down. Um, you can bring it down to whatever you like but I think 25 tends to work because it's just very faint so you can't really tell which is exactly what I want so got that and then I'm going to what you want to do now is select all these and then do control J so now you've got all the layers again but these ones that are already selected here just right click and come down to merge layers so now you've got the full image in flat and then you can turn all these bottom ones off here 
And then what we're going to do is, oops, what we're going to do is duplicate this. And now you're going to add the, um, what is it? Oh, go, sorry, go to filter. And you want to add noise. For the first one, I'm going to add, let's say, five. And make sure it's on Gaussian as well. If it's on uniform, oh no, that, that doesn't necessarily matter, sorry. Um, but I tend to have it on Gaussian, it stands out a little bit more. Um, monochronic, you want, yeah, monochromatic, you want to keep it. So you want to make sure that's selected because if it's not, you'll, if you can, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but um, all the pixels are like RGB colours, so you can see all the different individual colours. And for this, I want it to be just black and white and look gritty, so I'm going to select that, which makes it black and white. Press OK. Duplicate that again. Come to filter, blur, whoops, Gaussian blur. And then you want to bring this down to about, let's say, 0.5. The noise that we just added to it, that just blurs it a little bit, which sort of makes the whole image just look more old style. So press OK with that. Duplicate it again. And this time I'm going to add noise again. But we're going to bring it up to about 8 or 9. So it's a bit more obvious. I think that's looking pretty good now. And if you want, you can turn on the bottom layer, which should be original, um, and just drag that right to the top. And doing that, you can just turn it on and off, and you can see the difference from the original there to the new version. And from here, you can duplicate this layer again, the top one. And some this isn't what I like to do all the time, but sometimes I do. I come back and have a mess around with the... Um, Color lookup uh, filters. Sometimes I look through these, and occasionally I'll go through these ones. And I think for this one, green, yeah, that one gives it a nice look. So I'm going to go for that. And once you've got to this stage, like I would normally do, I would throw on a logo or anything that I've been working on. So let's just get this one. Throw the oops, oh, open the After Effects. <laughs> Paste that on there. I'm going to paste it as pixels so I don't necessarily need it as a smart object at the minute. Scale it down. And I'm just going to. Oh, it's already rasterized. Just press Ctrl U to bring up hue and saturation. And I'm just going to bring the. Oops. The lightness all the way up to make it white. And as you can see, the um, it doesn't really stand out too much from the background, which probably it, well, is a problem. So I'm going to go down to the layer below. Press New Layer. And make sure your background layer here is selected black, selected to black, sorry. And then you do is Control or Command Backspace, which will fill the layer with that colour. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this down to say 25. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so you can the logo itself stands out a bit more on the background, and the background's still quite quite easily visible. But um, I'm going to bring that up a bit actually, just to just see if I can get it. Yeah, that, that looks a bit better. Alright, so that's everything guys. I um, hope this has helped and let me know what other tutorials you want to see. Thanks for watching.